Hello and welcome back to Coin Lady channel. I have some information about the past price movement of XRP that I think you're going to find very interesting. Reading this confirmed for me that I should stick to my current investment strategy, as I tend to do nothing with my newfound wealth once I've made my purchases. It may sound dull, but trust me, it's not. If you look at how people treat tumultuous times in the stock market, people getting in and out of positions in a little bit of heat and other sweating bullets, then you'd be able to sleep soundly at night, which is awesome if you're like me and you're investing in crypto or our stocks because we share the same human DNA. Consequently, the best sell at a loss. Yes, you got just super big bring in your very smart data showing that those who just don't do anything make the most money, certainly when it comes to the stock market, and you think you're gaming the system and figuring stuff out because you're selling at a tiny bit of a profit. Like I said before, Putting money into cryptocurrency is in our genetic makeup. This evidence therefore serves only to further solidify that view. But I can tell you that XRP has been trending upward for the vast majority of its history. It's easy to lose sight of that when XRP seems to be going nowhere for a while, as it has recently, or when we're experiencing a period of low market sentiment. I have no idea how many people share this sentiment. Now, considering that XRP value has recently risen dramatically, from around 36 cents to 58 cents, this makes a lot of sense. At the time this was recorded, it had dropped to around 50 cents. Nonetheless, it's helpful to be aware of this. And this excites me greatly. To be perfectly clear, I'm not a financial expert and am not giving any sort of financial advice. And remember, you should never use anything I say as a reason to buy or sell anything. I'm just a hobbyist who likes to share his knowledge on crypto-related topics through YouTube videos. But only as a pastime and for entertainment purposes. After finishing March with a rise of more than 40%, XRP price history predicts something big is coming this month, according to an article in a crypto media outlet I stumbled upon today. In April, the XRP price took a slight dip. By the way, I'm going to make this data bigger on the screen for you, and historical data suggests that the major price action for XRP should occur in the fourth month of the year based strictly on previous previous periods, it is likely to be positive in. However, despite what the headline suggests, the SEC case against Ripple is unrelated to this. Just some numbers from the past. And if you're holding XRP because you expect things to go well on average, you're in luck because April has a positive track record. That being the case, we now have that information. Just some numbers. On top of that, we anticipate a decision from Judge Torres any time now. Plus, it might have a great outcome. I shudder to think what that would do to prices. However, let me read on for a while longer. Then, for those who are interested, we'll expand this information to a full-screen presentation dating back to 2014. In April, for instance, the XRP price has fluctuated by double digits on six of the month's nine trading days. 2015, 2016, and 2019 are the only exceptions. The XRP price has either soared or plummeted at a similar rate in every year prior. With an average price change of plus 32. 1% in April, it is one of the four best months of the year for the cryptocurrency. This is fascinating, so let's make it a little bigger on the screen for those of you who are interested in taking a closer look. You can see the entire monthly price history of XRP here. That's what this is, and it extends all the way back to August of 2013 the first month for which data was kept and forward to the present day. Given that it is still early in the month of April, the percentage will undoubtedly shift as the days go by. This actually refreshes in the here and now. However, it is fascinating to observe. So, interestingly, XRP has gained value in April six times in the last nine years. Intriguing as it may be to learn that March traditionally is XRP best performing month, I was even more intrigued to discover something that ultimately served to validate my investment thesis. If you scroll down far enough, you'll see the average returns for XRP. Before I started recording, I counted them. If I haven't messed that up, it means, Honestly, I'd say it's a quickie nine months out of the year. When looking at the average over the course of many years, we see that nine out of every 12 months experience rising prices. If you've held XRP for a while, especially the past few years, you might not agree with me on this. We've had to put up with a lot of nonsense. 
and, you know, sometimes things just are down. For example, the period between 2018 and 2022 wasn't exactly so odd for crypto in general. But check out all these good months we've had. Calendar months run from January to December in this image. So, those are the good points. 12,345,678. Net. Yeah. That's all there is to it. I did it in haste for the sake of the recording. That works out to an average of 9 good months per year. Also, it's interesting to note that, on average, the months of November and December tend to be the best. Given the limited number of data points, it will be fascinating to observe how things settle out over time. However, at the end of December 2017, XRP obviously experienced its greatest run ever. As a result, this is a contributor that skyrocketed 818.9% from November to December 2017. That's certainly not zero. The results will be off by a small margin, of course. And I get that too. The larger point that I wanted to make, however, is that the trend has been upward. For this reason, most months in the past have seen an increase in value, as this is the general direction in which XRP has been moving, however, this can be difficult to recognize and feel in the heat of the moment. The fact that I didn't notice this until I did some basic counting before filming this video is itself interesting. However, I have switched to a new tab at the moment. Similar information, but this time for Bitcoin. And again, for XRP was 9 out of 12, but for Bitcoin, just 8 out of 12, and I'm going to count this with you right now to make sure because I did admittedly countless really quick but here 1,234,567 yep, 8 out of 12, and that's not to speak negatively about Bitcoin, Bitcoin is what stick T. Although I like Bitcoin a lot, I'm not particularly enthusiastic about it because, well, technology is technology. Those who were destined to amass the most are popping fortunes simply by virtue of being alive have done so. They've realized that Bitcoin isn't the best way to make a lot of money quickly if that's what you're after. I think we've reached the awkward stage now, and I've adjusted my betting accordingly, however, I'm not here to trash Bitcoin, quite the contrary. The same basic idea, however, remains valid. And I find that quite cool. Most months see increases, which is to be expected given Bitcoin's 14-year upward trend. Okay, why do you think XRP will suddenly stop growing? Is there a compelling reason why not? If I'm missing something, could you please enlighten me? Just wondering if you think things will settle down in another 5, 10, or 15 years, as I see widespread adoption of XRP and crypto in general, or if you think things will land somewhere in the middle. That's why we're so psyched to be here. Because it won't always be possible to dive headfirst into cryptocurrency and reap the kinds of rewards we're all anticipating. Unless you're one of the crazy people who thinks XRP is going to $122,000, I don't think what many of us are expecting is unreasonable. That's insane. Sadly, that did not occur. The possibility of ordinary people acquiring truly transformative wealth, however, is still very much alive and well. But he skipped ahead 20 or 30 years, not that there wouldn't be a chance then. But what I'm getting at is that if more people accepted the reality of this phenomenon, fewer people would see it as a gamble, and more money would flow into it. Therefore, the multiplier effect is unlikely to be drastically reduced. At some point, trading stocks may become just as exciting as trading forks, and eventually, both may be equally boring. That point has long since passed. I mean, it's a great time to be alive, no doubt about it. This is why, despite the fact that I find my current method of investing to be rather unappealing, I intend to stick with it. The last time I bought XRP was in October of 2020, so this literally means that I buy things. And that's just because I had a problem and bought a ridiculous amount, then I realized I needed a support group or something because my spending was out of control, and then I started spreading my investments around. In general, though, whenever I see a coin that seems promising, I buy it and then sit on it until its value exceeds a certain threshold, at which point I diversify my holdings and reap the rewards of taking some of the risk out of the equation. If slash when that time comes, I will act accordingly. As the size of the crypto market continues to grow, it is my sincere hope that this will be the case. It's fantastic that I literally have zero responsibilities. I need to exercise some patience. 
And while I recognize that many of us hold Michael Saylor in less than glowing esteem, I believe that there are good reasons for this. Michael Saylor, the founder and CEO of publicly traded company MicroStrategy, is a Bitcoin maximalist who has stomped all over XRP, effectively making XRP a security. I get that he has a lot of Bitcoin on him. Maximalism, which he shares with Bitcoin, is the most poisonous feature of the modern crypto industry. Absolutely poisonous and ruinous, it is. It has no basis in fact. Michael Saylor, meanwhile, has created his own little world where Bitcoin is the only currency that counts. Nonsense, but he's carrying some serious baggage. Perhaps his brains have been watered down to the point that he believes what he's saying. Either that or he's just flat out lying. You should know that anyone can con someone into giving him or her some Bitcoins, perhaps these virtual currencies are undervalued, but I can't say for sure. Some of these maxes out there, I'm afraid, really do believe the nonsense they are spreading. They are in an echo chamber where they keep hearing it, and eventually they'll start to believe it themselves. Because everyone keeps saying it, and these people keep believing it. But even if you share my skepticism of Michael Saylor, to which I would respond, well, I'm with you join the party, I maintain that his strategy for Bitcoin investment is sound. Since his business has been so successful in recent years, he is essentially just buying things at whatever price they may be offered at. And so the seers say, you got to do something within, so he's been effectively tossing it into Bitcoin. Therefore, it is related to his firm belief in that. And that's totally fine. I can appreciate the effect, I appreciate the method, and I am convinced by your argument. And, you know, it's definitely a measured approach, you have to have complete assurance in yourself and complete knowledge of the task at hand, you have to be patient, you have to keep your emotions in check. So, he's acting in all those ways. This is conceptually similar to what I am doing with all of the crypto that I hold, including but not limited to XRP and Bitcoin. I'm using my ETH, my HBAR, a coin toss, you name it. If and when my financial situation improves to the point where I can invest in cryptocurrency, I will do so. I've been investing in cryptocurrencies for well over five years at this point, so it doesn't matter to me if I buy high or low. And it's not something I stress over. Since I believe there will be a significant overall benefit in the end, I don't feel the need to pretend to be a guru when explaining why. No, I didn't study economics in college. I couldn't be more unlike a financial guru. But I think the average person can figure out the fundamentals. And simply by putting money where it makes some semblance of sense and then leaving it alone for a very long time. The effects can be dramatic. Throughout time, that has without a doubt been the case. It's true in crypto as it is in the stock market, but you have to put in more capital and wait for a longer period of time to see those kinds of returns. Michael Saylor, if we're talking crypto so micro strategy, he's been buying Bitcoin again as recently as yesterday and announced yet another purchase. Michael Saylor spews nonsense about Bitcoin and money being energy, and Baba, Baba, Baba mini craps all over XRP again, and I just think that this is the strategy. That place is full of, like, nonsense, but I still think the approach is right. MicroStrategy, an American business intelligence firm, recently announced the purchase of 1,045 Bitcoin at a price of approximately $29.3 million, or an average price of $28,016 per Bitcoin. MicroStrategy executive chairman Michael Saylor tweeted on April 5 that the company now has 140,000 bitcoins, which were acquired between January and April 2023 for a total of approximately $4.17 billion, or an average price of $29,803 per bitcoin. As the company continues to hold bitcoin as a reserve asset, this announcement marks a major step forward. There you have it. And I'm confident that in the coming years, XRP will substitute actually outpace any returns from Bitcoin. But hey, that's cool, different people are entitled to their own opinions. I get that he has a soft spot for Bitcoin, but the fact that his investments are currently losing money is irrelevant to me, this is especially true considering that I was in the red for the first few years I held XRP. After investing in XRP, I felt confused. And I kept buying because, you know, it's only for a limited time. Remember that this is a natural part of the cycle. It's not hard to grasp such a fundamental idea, you know. After XRP dropped from its high of close to 
zero, I began buying I think at 55 cents, and then it went down to $15, about more than more 45 and 40 cents, and 35 and 30, all the way down to 15 cents, and I ended up buying it at that price. I don't think it will make much of a difference whether I bought XRP when it was 55 cents or when it was 15 cents. Given that I had exposure averaging out to around 25 cents, I don't think it will matter if XRP does rocket to, say, $5, $10, $15, or $20, I have no idea where it's going. I don't claim to be able to, and I never try to predict market movements. But let's assume it reaches a much higher level in the future, as I expect it will. That is a terrible possibility that I did not consider. It makes no difference that I bought some XRP at a higher price and some at a lower price. This is why I thought it would be entertaining to share with you some information I found on the website CryptoRank. EO. But yeah, you know, I mean, they're going to be some down months, and during a bunch of months in a row where things are really, really down, is kind of what it paints. The years 2018 and 2022, for example, were not particularly pleasant. But when you consider the bigger picture, almost every month ends up in the black on the annual average. Doesn't that give it away? Doesn't that imply that this strategy makes sense? For the simple reason that I think so. Given MicroStrategy's short history with Bitcoin, it's not surprising that the company entered the market at a point where its holdings would appear to be down or up, depending on the time of day the portfolio was examined. How shocking is that? My XRP holdings are the first thing that comes to mind. It didn't look so good for a while, especially during the first two or three years. But now there would have to be a major sell-off for me to ever be in the red again, which is to say, it's possible. About 25 cents per binding seems about right for me. Therefore, the possibility of dropping below that exists if we receive very frightening news and it frightens markets with the SEC, the ripple. But I'm not going to let that stop me from holding on for the time being. That's what I've settled on in this situation. But I'm just making the more general point that in the end, for those who are sufficiently patient, it doesn't matter what it takes, and that the people who did it were the people who ended up with life-changing wealth. The tough part is that you can't do anything about it. I realize how ridiculous that probably seems. Being idle is a very challenging mental exercise. People experience strong feelings and think to themselves, oh, I really need to get out. That's the case. This other thing has taken off and I have to go after it. Most people act in this manner. But all I'm doing is looking at numbers. I'm doing what's best for myself, and the numbers support that conclusion. You shouldn't buy or sell anything based on what I say because I'm not a financial advisor. Right. Please like and subscribe my channel. See you later, bye.